Hello, I'm Peter Knight and this is the first in a series of short lectures about geomorphology. In this first lecture I want to introduce the course by looking at some of the big questions that geomorphology asks about the world. I'm deliberately going to go quite quickly, so use the pause or rewind buttons if you want longer on each slide. The aim of the course is to help you to think about how landscapes work, about the science of geomorphology and about how geomorphology is an applied discipline with career opportunities. If you want to start with a definition, then let's say that geomorphology is the study of landforms, landscapes and the processes that create them. There are plenty of variations on that definition in the literature, and by the end of the course you should be able to come up with a good definition of your own. Read widely and make up your own mind. The geomorphologist Andrew Gowdy wrote a paper in 2002 in which he argued that geomorphology could appeal in terms of aesthetics and relevance, in other words, the study of great landscapes and the application of that study to practical needs, especially in the context of global change. So it's easy to identify a number of ways in which geomorphology is important. For example, understanding landscapes helps us to enjoy them more, to predict and mitigate hazards, and to identify and exploit resources. So that's what these lectures are about. Landforms and landscapes, the processes that create them, the factors that control those processes, and how we can put our understanding of that whole system to practical use. Over the years, people have approached geomorphology in many different ways, and geomorphology today includes elements from many different approaches. For example, we can talk about structural geomorphology, where geological controls strongly influence landscapes, or process geomorphology, where our understanding of landforms is based on a study of the processes that affect them. And many famous geomorphologists have been associated with these different approaches. You will encounter many of these in your independent reading around these lectures. But at the heart of the discipline, as Gaudi said, are great landscapes that amaze and inspire us and make us ask, well, how does that work? Geomorphology is all about getting answers to questions like that. And we can begin the course with some big, simple questions and some big, simple answers. For example, why are there hills? Well, we could say there are hills because of processes like uplift, erosion and deposition acting on materials at the Earth's surface. Why are some places flat? For the same reasons, processes acting on surface materials. And why is there so much variety? Why aren't all the hills the same? Because they're created and modified by different processes for different amounts of time, and they're made of different materials. These processes that we will need to study are things like weathering, erosion, entrainment, deposition, mass movement, and tectonics. A lot of these landforming processes involve material moving down slope. This is controlled by forces like gravity and resistances like friction, so we'll need to consider those forces too. For example, to understand how an object on a hill slope will behave, whether it's a pebble in a flash flood or a climber on a rock face, we need to think in terms of things like gravity, shear stress, resistance and thresholds. And the relationship between these factors are often controlled by environmental conditions like temperature we'll need to explore how those conditions affect materials and processes. Our goal is to understand how landforms and geomorphic processes reflect the impact of these controls, and to put that understanding to good use. We'll look at a lot of different landscapes as case studies, but we'll see that the same basic rules apply to many different cases, so we can use the same knowledge to understand landscapes in any environment. The same principles that underpin mass movements, for example, underpin glacier motion too. The biggest, most fundamental question in geomorphology is why is the landscape like this, just here? The answer that this course leads towards is that landforms and landscapes are controlled by geomorphic processes and that those processes are controlled by environmental factors. By the end of the course we may have a more complex answer, but that one will do to get us started.